I'm going to take you to the event that's about the risk of corruption to entrepreneurial and business growth in Ghana. The obstacle to the business environment of Ghana. According to Transparency International, it is estimated that Ghana loses about 3 billion US dollars annually from corruption alone. Well, action is needed. A dialogue on that matter is more than necessary. Where does corruption start? Where does it end? How can we fight it? And where does one's individual responsibility while doing business start? Ladies and gentlemen, events like today's are important platforms of dialogue and among key figures from the public and the private sector. I see many interesting people here in the room who will sit here uh, in quite a, a few moments to discuss and to enlighten us on new approaches to fight corruption and also its role for Ghanaian business development. Distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, let me wish you a very fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. would like to hear uh, Dr. Theo Achampon. So if you could please set it up and then um, let's have it rolling. Thank you. Um, and just a bit of background. My name is Dr. Theo Achampong. I'm a senior fellow uh, at Imani, and I've been working with the team in relation to uh, the particular uh, dialogue that we're having today. But just for a bit of context, um, this is a partnership between Imani and GIZ, um, which we have been working on over the past year, um, in fact, a year and a half. Um, and this uh, uh, partnership between these two entities aims to carry out a series of policy dialogues, or what I like to call conversations, all geared towards improving the business climate. So we started off from November of uh, last year with the first of the dialogue that looked at um, the post-COVID uh, and COVID um, and the challenges that the pandemic has um, created for Ghanaian businesses. Um, subsequently, in March, we had the second one, which uh, looked at the EFCTA and what the EFCTA means for Ghanaian businesses. Um, in May, we did the third dialogue looking at the issue of business taxation and how or what role uh, taxation plays in Ghana's post-COVID um, economic uh, recovery. 
Um, and then we had a fourth dialogue in July, looking at the issue of energy access and affordable um, electricity and energy more broadly in support of uh, economic growth and job creation. Um, fast forward in September, we had the fifth dialogue looking at business registration, regulation, property rights, and the impact on uh, Ghana's business climate. And then lastly, today, we're having the final dialogue in the series uh, for uh, this session, looking specifically at the issue of corruption, but not just discussing corruption for its own sake, how it impacts the business environment and you know some of the strategies that uh, some of the firms are adopting in relation to this particular uh, issue. So I just want to welcome you all warmly uh, to this afternoon's session and I hope that you would enjoy and you know contribute so we have an informed dialogue. But going forward, the recommendations that come out of this discussion would also be forwarded or passed on to uh, the uh, policymakers that need be. So thank you all very much, and I'm looking forward to a fascinating discussion this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Theo. And um, for all those also uh, listening on Zoom, um, please continue listening, and um, I hope we'll have a fruitful and vibrant dialogue. It's time now to call Carl Tonam Duho to give us the presentation, after which we would go into the discussion. So, Carl, please come and take care of the presentation. Please let's receive Carl. Thank you very much. My name is Carl. Uh, I'm part of the team. And we have been using more of a research-oriented approach to carry out the whole research uh, reform dialogue. Because we came to understand that without having rigorous research backing whatever policy decision we want to make or policy alternative that we are preferring for government and the various policy makers to, to, to make, will not be able to make uh, informed, take informed decision. So we did a research that, under, that will underpin whatever discussion we're having today. So I'll be presenting on the survey on corruption and the business climate in Ghana the key summary findings, because we have uh, about 25-page document that, that is supporting whatever we'll be saying, but we want to just share the highlights so that we look at the statistics and then whatever we'll be discussing will be backed by that. The next slide. I'll be moving a bit fast. Uh, so this is the outline of the presentation. We have a motivation and we have four areas. The first area is on corruption in the business environment. Then we also look at corruption and firm performance. We look at corruption management and reaction to corruption. Issues about corruption, corruption training, corruption communication, and all of that. Then also we look at coping strategies to corruption, and we look at some few uh, conclusions. The next slide. For, for Dr. Tio indicated that we have been doing this for the almost one and a half year now. And this is the sixth dialogue at the la last end. And we have covered various issues. But the point is that, the previous issues are connected to corruption, because if corruption is endemic, it will affect the tax system. If corruption is there, it will affect COVID response. It will affect almost every aspect of whatever we are doing. So we are seeing it as kind of an end that we have to also fix in. The next slide. And we have a motivation. The point is that in the academic literature and policy literature, there are arguments about how corruption causes mistrust, it undermines entrepreneurial innovation. It reduces foreign direct investment. It weakens investor confidence. It also destroys the lives of children and the generations unborn. So the point is that we all understand that corruption is problematic. Although there are arguments in the literature for whether corruption is, is being good or bad, which we'll look, we'll look at briefly. Then we also looked at the previous slide. We also look at an estimate that was done that Ghana loses about 3 billion, which is 4.2% of the 2022 GDP of Ghana annually to corruption alone. 
And it means that it is critical for us to look at it. If this thing is continuing, we will not be able to end extreme poverty or to be able to increase prosperity. The next slide. And we have also checked the literature and seen that a lot of the time when we talk about corruption, we want to limit it to the private sector. But that should not be the case. Whatever public sector corruption is occurring, sometimes are driven by the private sector also. Because sometimes government engage the private sector in some, some of the services and the products that they, 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 they churn out. And also we look at the literature and then we see that there is a lot of focus on the public sector. Then we want to combine and have a more private sector engagement with it and then connect it to the business climate so that we see what are the issues and then how can we form policy to solve the problems and ensure that our business climate is good to have a, a, a better business environment. So we engage captains of industry, we engage various leaders, corporate leaders, which some of you may be part of. And then we try to get your responses and then try to see how, what is the current practices and what can we do to solve it. The next slide. So these are the four things that I, I talked about. We'll not delve deep into the content because we have the report which we'll share. We'll go straight into the result and it will be organized based on the four key themes. First is the impact of corruption on the business environment. Second on corruption, is between corruption and firm performance. And then the third on corruption management. And then the fourth one on the coping strategies. We'll go to the next slide. The next slide. Yeah, so the first thing that we, we, we try to explore is to explore what are the forms of corruption that happen in Ghana. And what we saw is that the common one among them is the indirect payment. So it happens in forms of indirect payment to people, to clients, to various stakeholders. And then inappropriate gifts and hospitality, entertainment, travel uh, is the second highest. And then we see political donations also, non-cash payments, sponsorship, employees, and then the other ones follow other. But there are some people who are say, say they don't know uh, how it happens. The next slide. Then also we look at the functional areas in the various business organizations. Which areas is corruption common? And we saw that the highest is procurement. And if you check the literature, you see a lot of, a lot of mention of co-procurement. And we like the discussion to delve into some of those things. But the second highest is taxation, followed by licensing, bidding or sales, import or export, trade issues after, then regulation, and then intellectual property issues also come in. The next slide. But also we moved in and then delve into what the, the, the nexus between corruption and firm performance. And we asked that, does corruption has a net uh, 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 effect? What's the, what's the net effect of corruption on firm performance? And we were surprised to know that 83% of the people indicated that it reduces their performance. 83%. But also we saw that 10% of them indicated that it moderately increased their performance rather. So 83% are saying corruption is bad, it reduced their performance. But 10% of the executives are saying corruption for them has a net, uh, uh, it has a good uh, effect for them, for their performance. Then effectiveness of the industry-led anti-corruption programs. We have a lot of anti-corruption programs. How effective are they? Only 39% of the people indicated that it is effective for them. Then we also ask whether the, 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 the various stakeholders have knowledge about the anti-corruption programs. And we indicated that, we, we saw that fully 41% of them know about the various anti-corruption programs. We know of the Extractive Industry Transparency in, in, Initiatives Program. Recently, the, 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 the Ghana Stock Exchange is discussing the Global Reporting Initiative. They are trying, they have a corruption component and various anti-corruption uh, uh, standards. Only 41% of them uh, indicated that they have idea about it. The next slide. Then we also looked at whether the organizations, whether the, the, these experts believe that, believe that their organizations can eradicate corruption. And we found that there, there was a, an affirmative response, but based on condition. And we saw that 57% of the executive indicated that it can be eradicated provided senior management follow ethical principles. 